wondering who the owner is. So, the owner, yes, the owner, the owner, the owner. And I have been calling myself Aya Diona. So, Diona is a pet name I coined for my boo. And um, I came up with the name because of, you know, the way we connected. The undiluted happiness this man right here makes me feel the joy, the peace. And I just felt, oh, this is the rifle. Like, this is who, okay, this is my Adam. Like, I am 100% sure that God took me out of him. Like, he's the rightful person. And that's why I gave him the owner. So that's actually a nickname for him? Yes, it's a pet name for him. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, so... Whew, uh, I don't want to get emotional, actually. I said I wasn't going to get emotional. Mm -hmm. And I'll try like as much as possible to just have it all in control okay so you know before now I had a very very bad breakup like and so after that marriage that bad marriage you know I made up my mind that I wasn't going to hook up with anybody anymore I was just going to focus on my career and my kids and then this good looking man comes into my life at first I was like well I felt the connection the chemistry um, the companionship anytime I'm with him I don't want to leave you know and you know I felt it, it felt good and then when he asked me to marry him he's, he's a Muslim by the way I was like marriage no I wanted to run yeah. at first I was like so I don't that is your last experience really scared you about yes it did actually and I just felt marriage wasn't I don't think marriage is my thing because I didn't want to go through all that anymore because I'm very emotional and uh, I just felt I didn't want to go through all that wahala anymore and I was just going to focus on my kids and you know my career and for a very long time I did that for like close to five three years there about actually I did that I was just more focused on my career and my kids and then you know he came into my life but it brought so much happiness I'm not saying this because it's here it brought so much joy you know so much peace He's a good man. I tell him all the time that he's a good man. And then when he's, he's popped the question, I was like, okay, I don't want to lose this beautiful experience I've had with him. The connection is, is divine. So I'm like, okay, let me just give it one more, you know, trial, one more time. And I know this is my final bus stop. I can tell it from my gut that this is a forever thing. And... Um, it's a decision I took, and I'm glad I took it because it has been blissful all the way. And yeah. so well, um, Messi has always been um, a business partner, and um, I've always seen something very special. And what was the first thing that got me connected, that got me attracted to her, was that um, she was very open and she was very truthful to me with the first transaction we had together. In fact, when I gave her some money to produce a movie, she had to return some money back to me, which was something I never experienced, even up to today. No one has ever come back to me that um, this money is more than enough. Uh, this is what we have left and you have to take it back. And um, I was like, wow, you know, and um, I was impressed. And um, at the same time, I felt, wow, this is somebody I really need to keep up with in terms of a business relationship. And um, when she had a, uh, the bad experience uh, from a previous marriage, um, it was in the open. Everybody saw it, and um, initially when I heard about it, in fact, I was even advising her, oh, you know, the usual way we Africans are, oh, just be calm, be patient, everything is going to be fine, and do not leave your marriage. And um, she was like, hmm. 
um, if I were your sister, were you going to advise me to be in an abusive relationship? And I was like, oh, I have to, you know, I just had to step back and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, you're an adult. In fact, I was in the U.S. when that happened. I saw it on the Internet. So, and um, well, I had to like, you know, let me leave this girl to, you know, you know, just be focused because I didn't, I didn't really like the kind of response she gave to me. And, um, you, know, you know, I was in the U.S. for a while, and by the time I came back, oh, what is next for us to do? And she was like, no, I'm not interested in production right now. I needed to focus on my children and my business. Uh, when it comes to production, I need to uh, put that aside and all that. And, oh, okay. And I continued with other producers I had as at you know, as a den. And, um, you know, once in a while we'll chat, we'll talk, oh, how are you doing this and that? And, um, you know, you know, she had to, and then at a point she said, oh, she was trying to get back into the production. And the title of the movie she produced then was, um, um, uh, what is this uh, 77 crime? Bullets. 77 bullets. In fact, she never collected money from me. She produced, she did everything by herself. And I was like, oh, is it that this girl does not want to work with me anymore? Is it that I've said something she didn't like at a point? And um, she said to me that, you know what, I'm not uh, willing to sell to you. I just want to start, you know, having my own, you know, content and all that. And I was like, okay, I respect that. In any way you need my help, let me know, and I'll be willing and ready to help. And at a point, she called me again. She said, um, I want to sell this movie. Are you willing to buy? I said, oh, really? Okay, let me have the privilege to see the preview copy. And um, she sent to me. I, I previewed, and I liked. And I was like, okay, well. And we, we started the business in you know, a relationship again in fact even after then she did another movie for another, another marketer yeah. in the in the name of corporate pictures yeah. if i thought i thought we i lost my relationship with her because i felt maybe because i was trying to advise her with her previous marriage i think she took an offense with that and i felt well i don't think i've ever done anything wrong by saying what i thought was right as at that point mm -hmm. so but she came back to me and she said um would you like to buy this and because i was not really happy with her i had to price the movie very low yes i was like sure i don't even care well would you take this amount and she was like no you are a bad person why would you price this you have the experience in the industry you have seen this movie you know how much i would have put into this movie why would you price this low and i was like, oh okay i don't have to buy and you don't have to sell to me you can take to whoever you want to sell to. After all, you just sold a movie to corporate pictures, you can go to him. Mm -hmm. And maybe a month later, she came back to me and she was like, okay, do you really like this movie? I said, yes, I do. Okay, are you sure you like it? I said, of course. Okay, are you willing to buy? Yes. Okay, how much can you buy? I said, I've given an offer already. Can you add more? I said, no. Uh -uh. Yes. He said, okay. And she said, okay, how would you pay? I said, I'm gonna pay you half now and half when I sell. And she was like, hmm, are you sure that is what you're gonna do? I said, yes. She said, I'll get back to you. And she got back to me the same day at, at the night or thereabouts, later in the day. Yes. And she said, okay, you can have the movie. I'll send everything, the master everything back to you. And I got the movie. And I started promoting another. I released the movie. And I made so much money. And the movie did too. The movie did very well. Wow. Online, on a DVD, whatsoever, the movie did very well. And, and I felt that, hmm. My conscience was not telling me that will it be right for me to just swallow this money? I didn't invest. She invested her money, her intellectual, whatever, her money, everything. I just came, I just sold, and I made so much money. 
this won't be nice. I said, well, let me, let, let me just do what we Muslim call sadaka or zakat, so that whatever I'm eating will digest well, and it will be <laughs> nutritious and, maybe, you know, be helpful to me, you know, just like, you know, just, I was just cracking, just called, I said, well, and because I've always had account details, I just transferred, and in the narration, I put gifts. And she was like, oh, gift, how? I said, yeah, that's a gift. And she was like, hmm, wow. I said, and she was like, oh, that was very nice of you. Although, I've always told her that the movie did very well, even when I released the movie. And another thing that was, you know, very striking was that the usual producers and actors, when you sell a movie like that, and the movie does well, they will come back to you like, oh, you know, the movie did well, you know, you're supposed to, you know, give me some more money, some more reality, you know. She never said that. She was just like, oh, well, I'm happy. Oh, the movie did well. And another thing I did, well, I never lied. Anytime I call, I say, wow, the movie is doing well, Lou. We are doing, even on the promotions, you know, she has a lot of followers. Have this Yes. Even though the deal wasn't a very good deal to her, she promoted so well. On a pl all our platforms, and I was like, "Wow!" Very passionate about my and I said, "Wow, this girl!" And I was like, "Hmm, this is very unique," because I didn't really expect her to put so much effort and energy, because she knew already that the movie was mine. Yeah. But she did. She was promoting. She was, you know, at the end of the day, that was how we reconnected. So we started again, and she was like, "Oh, I never knew you were this." kind-hearted you know that was very thoughtful of you that was very nice of you oh okay I said okay let's go for a dinner and that was how we reconnected mm -hmm. so I've always known that Mercy is a very truthful person yeah. very hard-working very reliable and she's somebody that you can confide in she's somebody that you know when you have an opportunity to deal with her yeah. she's not gonna betray you loyal. she's very loyal you know, whatever she says is what she's going to do. And whatever she's going to do is what she's going to say. So I've always known that about her. About 10 years. Ten. Yes. Mm -hmm. The first movie you did for me was in 2012, thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2012. You think it's more than 10 years? I think no, it's about 10 years. Thinking it's not up to 10. Yeah. I think it's about 10 years. Okay. It's yes. more with dates. I'm yes. We were never friends. Though I've met him like a couple of times, but we were never friends. He's an older person to me, so there's no way we, we are not connected in any way. Because there was a picture that was flying all over social media of you and the wife. I, I don't know what function. No, I think it was his that, that was, was his yeah, for a birthday. That was yeah. about eight, nine years ago. And I was invited. She was invited. Ogabelo was invited, Femi Adebayo, Enoje, Sholaku Soko, Ibrahim Chata, a lot of Nollywood, you know, superstars were present, okay. even so, some of my colleagues. I was married at that time. I you know, she along. came just like Ibrahim Chata came with his uh, wife. partner, mm -hmm. uh, Shola Kusoko came with her husband, mm -hmm. so a whole lot of people came with their spouses. Yeah. And It is not true. That is not true. There is nothing like snatching. I'm a full-grown adult, and they were never friends. And it's a decision I, think I it made. just came up with, it, so, with a lot of narratives. Yeah. It's just like anybody could walk up to any celebrity in a party, or even forget about my party. Yeah, you could meet a celebrity even in a mall. Oh, I like you. I'm your take pictures that, make us friends. that does not make you guys friends so we never friends. you know so it's we could step out of this building now somebody oh Messi, oh i like you i'm your fan can we take pictures well i my family is in the u.s and i shuttle between u.s and nigeria because my business is here in nigeria and um People say we are separated. Maybe they are saying that because my family 
is not here with me in Nigeria, but we are good together. Though there were issues, you know, because of, you know, what is going on, but everything is under control. You know, everything is back to normal and everything is fine. So we're good. I am a Muslim and um, my religion permits me to marry more than one wife. Now I am married to two wives. I have two beautiful women and I'm glad everything is good. I strongly believe that we are making progress. Though it may not go at the pace at which we want, but it's steady, but it's moving. And I believe that um, if we continue the way we are working, we are getting there and I believe we're gonna get there. Because, um, you know, I remember when I started, when I joined the industry, it was practically on the VHS, you know, and later it was on the VCD. Now, as you know, I'm the chairman of Baka TV. It's a, you know, SVOD online. online. You know, people subscribe to, to watch, watch all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know, that is not how it used to be. I remember so many years when we used to, you know, request for VCDs from Nigeria to send, uh, to send to us to watch movies. But now it's not like that. And if you see the kind of content we, we, we produce, we turn out from, from Nigeria, it is globally competitive. So I believe that, you know, we are not doing badly we doing and, well. and um, we, we, we're going to keep, you know, doing better. Mm -hmm. The journey so far has been, has not been very easy. Mm -hmm. I've faced a lot of hurdles, you know, when I just started in the industry. It was not easy for me to to be accepted like as every other person who is a green horn in the industry. A lot of people won't believe in you um, and they, would, they were not ready to give me the platform for me to showcase my talent. So it was um, very challenging for me to prove myself that look, I carry this talent and I want to share it with the world. So that was part of the you know, challenge I had when I just started in the industry. And then, you know, way back, there was no money. There was no money in the industry. And then, before I joined Nollywood, I was already working. I was, you know, working in the financial institution. I was earning money, you know, salary. And then I'd, I had my daughter to take care of and all those things. So, you know, at some point, I had to leave my job to venture into Nollywood fully. So you can imagine you living like a place where you're sure of, like you're secured in terms of, yes, stipend, and then you're going to somewhere that you're not sure of what you're going to expect. You don't know if you're going to make it, you know, this is like living a greener pasture for somewhere that it's not, that you're not even sure of. So that was a huge bold step I took. I resigned from my work. I, I came into the industry. I started going for auditions. Sometimes I get picked. Sometimes I don't get picked. At times you get picked, and the director thinks you're not, you know. Good enough for the role. Yeah. Even though you auditioned and you you passed all the stages, you know, the director might be like, I don't know you. And I'm, there was a particular one. I was like, if you don't give me the chance, how would you even know me? You understand? Do you? People that you know, somebody gave them chances or whatever, yes. So, but a lot of times, I got all those kind of challenges and but I, I just kept going. I forged ahead because I had this deep-rooted passion for the job. And let me quickly mention that I am a professional to the core. I actually studied creative arts as theater arts from the University of Lagos. I left my i was in the polytechnic before getting to the university so instead of me to go back for my hnd i went to university of lagos to study the arts because i wanted to be well grounded i wanted to know the nitty-gritty of the job so that at least that would help me i wanted to arm myself 
with all that. So after going through all that and you still come out and then you're not getting anything, you're trying your best, people are rejecting you. I remember when we used to queue at Winnie's Hotel in Surulere, hanging around, looking for scream. You know, a lot of things. That's why I said it's a lot of, it's a long story. And then gradually, gradually, I started with the English genre of Nollywood. And a friend of mine was like, Messi, English is saturated. Too many people. Why don't you try Yoruba and, you know, thank God you can speak Yoruba. You're a beautiful girl and all those things. So you have what it takes to actually thrive in the Yoruba movie industry. So I'm like, okay, fine. I took her advice. Thank God I took her advice. I crossed over and started doing Yoruba. The first movie I did, did not, not the first movie, but I would say the movie that brought me to limelight um, is titled Ara by Wemo Lu Paul in Ibadan. So I went to Ibadan to do that movie, and then the movie came out, and everybody accepted it. You know, everybody said, it's a pretty girl, <laughs> it's a new girl. And then I started getting scripts. Well, it wasn't all that easy, because you go to set for like two weeks. See, let me share a story with you. I went to a particular set, and we shot that movie for like two weeks or three weeks thereabouts. See, I, I, I slept in my car all through the days of shoots because I was not given a room. I didn't have money to like, take a room. All through, and don't forget, I was a single mom then. I still had my daughter to take care of. But I slept in the car, and in the morning, I'll go and be begging people to bathe in that bathroom. And then when I was leaving, after three weeks, two weeks, there were about three weeks of shoots, the producer gave me 5,000 naira. I collected the money and I was crying. I was like, God, mercy, not be say cost, they swear for you. How could you have left your paying good paying job for this? So those are part of the challenges I faced as you know a greenhorn when I just came into the movie industry. And then in lots of other things, the harassment, the orishi rishi things, and but the bottom line is that I did not give up. I kept pushing. Yes. Ladies, yes. Lot, I mean, I met a lot of the young ladies. Since I went for, there was this particular movie that they called for audition for, and this particular person, then it was like the big thing in Hollywood. You know, he had the blockbuster movie. Everybody knew him, and you know those times they do. We still do, but they do like School of Drama, all those caucuses and all those things. So I joined the School of Drama, and I auditioned for that role. I went first stage, second stage third stage and eventually I got the role and then I was supposed to go to the office to get my script and then the, the guy called me inside his office I was like Mr. I'm sorry you lost the role I'm like ah but I auditioned for this role now and everybody will stay stages different stages maybe say no get money I went out boss or a person will lap me all those kind of things and then I'll cram I don't sleep I'll stand in front of the mirror I'll cram my script get my reaction and you're telling me after going through all that and you're telling me I lost the role, why did I lose the role? And this guy goes, the director does not know you. Hey, I'm like, okay, if you were looking for someone known, why then did you audition for the role? And then the guy was like, Miss, you know now, eh, if you were very close to me, by now the director would have known you. It would have been following me everywhere. Apparently, prior to that time, the guy had asked me out and I didn't, you know, give it. So I was like, I never wanted to come and start touching me. I'm like, oh God, I beg. If not because of role, mm. shove it. I don't need it. Like, I worked out. Even though I was like, God, I earned this role. Why? But I didn't care because I'm like, I won't, I won't give in. I won't give in because I believed so much in myself. So on the day of shoots, I don't know if they got disappointed by whomever, but the man called me, guess what, and the man called me, I was like, oh, Messi, we're in VGC filming, and the girl that is playing the role, she's not even delivering, blah, 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 and the director asked that we bring you. Me, I didn't go. I said, Billy girl, I get pride. I'm like, no, don't worry, I'm very busy, even though I did else. Even though when I cut the call, I cried, I'm like, I hope I took the right decision. But looking back right now, I can boldly say that I took the right decision because I said no to harassment. I refused. You understand? And so many other cases, some, I know you've mentioned some, I would already be in the series. You know when you're already casted as so a part of the, the 
Yes, you're already in the movie. You're already playing a prominent role. And then the producer says, look, if you don't give me what I'm asking, I'm going to yank you off. And don't let me write the story. You go here, producer, they tell you, say, she may have known that wrote the story. I'll just say your character had an accident. And that's that. They did it to me. So a lot of times, I, I'll be so devastated. I'll be like, I hope I'm taking the right decision. But to God be the glory, so far, you know, it's been... Amazing. God has been gracious. For the upcoming actors, I would say just stay focused. Believe in yourself because it's only where you believe totally in yourself that you'll be able to convince somebody else to believe in you. So believe in yourself. And then I keep telling them, if you have an opportunity to play a role, if you, go, if you are auditioned in a movie and you have an opportunity to play, play a role, Give that role your best shot. Or more kill that role. And then I tell this up and coming now. Social media is a blessing to you guys. If you don't know, I am telling you, stop trolling people on the internet. Use it as a medium to showcase your talent. We have a lot of social media talents right now. Celebrities that actually came up through social media. We have a lot of skits makers that are making millions, buying houses, buying cars, doing well on social media because they focus on their talent rather than opening fake pages to troll celebrities. Celebrities are not your problem. Focus on yourself. Do something. Do a skit. Do a funny skit. You know, just look for something. Put it together. Tag everybody that matters. One day, somebody would see it. I report for a lot of people. I know a lot of other of my colleagues. I know John Jazzy report. He does reports for people and then phone care and all that. So do it. Tag everybody that you think needs to see. It. And then one day, somebody will report. So that's my advice for them. Stop trolling. Stop using social media to... <laughs> Stop being a savage on social media. Just concentrate on yourself. Use it to showcase your talent and then stay focused. And then another challenge I've had is, you know, it's not easy. Would I say it's not easy climbing up the stairs? Is that what they say? But it's very easy to come all the way down. So staying up there is a lot of hard work. You know, it has not been easy, but well... I've been grinding on God's grace, so it's God be the glory. A lot of people actually don't even know right now that I am not a Yoruba woman. Lots of people think that I am 100% Yoruba woman, aside my name, actually. I, I keep saying that I'm not trying to sound tribalistic. I don't know if that's the word, but I keep saying that Yoruba people are very welcoming, really. Like, when I got into the Yoruba movie industry, they embraced me. They welcomed me. Like, they just saw my talent and they celebrated my talent. It, it's been, and that's why, no matter what I do, wherever I go to, I can never forget the Yoruba movie industry because the Yoruba movie industry made me who I am today. There was no, oh, she's not Yoruba. No, there was no um, segregation. You understand? There was those um, discrimination. They embraced me and I kept getting scraped. You know, they did not even think of the fact that I was not Yoruba. And guess what? When I just started Yoruba movie industries, and when I just started in the Yoruba movie industry, my Yoruba wasn't this fluent. I learned on the job. My Yoruba was kata kata. Like, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't connect. It doesn't connect. Mm -mm. <laughs> But, you know, most of the producers I worked with, I want to use this medium to shout out to all the Yoruba movie producers, the directors I worked with. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Thank you. They were amazing, especially in my early days in the Yoruba movie industry. They were so patient, and then they would teach me. And then some of the actors that I also worked with, someone like Inka Kodro. I remember my first Yoruba movie, I played Inka Kodro's wife, and then, you know, he, he had to be teaching me all those Yoruba parables. Some other actors will give you attitude. But he took his time, he was teaching me. And then Auntie Shola too. I remember uh, Auntie Shola's job, Omo Kosomida. And then, you know, Auntie Shola was, or should I still say is, my... You know, I like her because she knows they take nonsense. She's a firebrand like me. And then her energy. You know, so when I had the opportunity to 
be part of her movie and walk us to me. I was looking forward to, you know, to me working with her. So when I got on that set, my director told me that I was going to be playing the side chick to her husband. And then Anshola was going to come to the house to harass me and want me to leave her husband. And then when Anshola comes in, she was just going to do her thing. You know the way Anshola does her thing? And then she just want me and go. So me, I won't talk. I'll just keep quiet and be looking. I'm like, okay, me that I just started. And Shola is already known. So Shola will come to my house and warn me, I'll be looking. So people will be like, this girl is a mumu. I didn't talk her in my mind. So that particular scene, when Shola came, she gave me, I gave her back. <laughs> I said, if they let me there, cause I don't agree this. She gave, I gave her back. I'm like, no, this woman not gonna take my shine. No, no darling. I'm, yes, and, to, and I'm glad the director did not quote. And after that, she hugged me. She said, that's my girl, go girl, you know? And so I had the opportunity to work with amazing actors when I just started. And that is why, you know, in my own little way, I support up and coming. If I come to your set, I support them. I do that because I had the privilege to work with people who were patient and who, who supported me when I just started. It's a lot of hard work. I get overwhelmed at times. It's a, I can't even lie to you because you have to create content as a brand influencer, brand ambassador for your brand, and that takes time. You know, I'm also an entrepreneur. My, my fashion store is the most followed in Nigeria. We have a, you know, my customer base is wide. Everybody loves Mac Divas clothing because that's what my store is called, Mac Divas. So I have customers far and wide and all those things. I have to cater to them because I don't want them to fall short of, you know, expectations from Mac Divas. And then I have a child who is in Canada. It's not, it's not easy when you have a child abroad. I have to keep up with what she's doing. And then I have a child there to have body. And then I have my big baby. So it's, it's at times I'm like, Hey, comments are being wrong, mad. So, but I think the grace, grace of God has been helping me. And then, to God be the glory, even though we just started this journey, but he has been very supportive with, you know, with everything, thereby making it easy for me to, to you know, marry all those very important roles together. He has been very supportive. You know, I'm, at times I'm like, babe, can you help me do this? Can you help me pick this? Can you help me do this? Can you check on this? Can you check on my staff? Can you just, you know, and then it has been amazing. So, and then my mom too has been supportive. I just have, I'm just blessed with people close to me that are very dependable. So it makes my job easier. I'm not poor. You know, I don't, I think I'm one of the most misunderstood people because I really don't know why people don't see my hard work. I work so damn hard. I hardly sleep. And then people just don't see my hard work. I'm not poor. I have assets. My child is abroad. I pay school fees in dollars. I, I change Naira to dollar. And I've been doing this before we started, before, you know. So I don't know why people came up with that notion that I married him because of money. It's not like he's poor, but I'm, I'm rich. To God with the glory, I'm very, extremely comfortable. So I don't know where they came up with that, too. I don't know how. But I just know when we came out. Oh, the house in Lagos? On the mainland, on the island, doesn't money. No, I did not marry him because of his money. I married him because I love him. Because he's my friend. Because he's my best friend. You know, and because he gives me so... Peace. He gives me peace. He makes me happy. I did not marry him because of his money. In, in fact, I'm working for him. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's so true. Because we're business partners and I work for him. So... I don't know where they come up with that notion, really, because I'm, help, I'm also building his brand. <laughs> no, but really, we complement each other, but you know, I also brought something to the table. It's not like I, did, I just walked into a relationship like I don't have any value I'm adding. I'm adding a lot of value to um, the relationship. Likewise, it's also adding value to me. So I'm not poor. I don't know why people just think, oh, once Messi is dating somebody. That's how they said 
um, uh, my ex, I chopped his money, I saw that one online, and I ran, I'm like, these people said, almost they see Messi, they just believe that, oh, Messi is a gold digger. I work hard for my money. All this influencing job I do, do you think I receive peanuts to be an influencer? No. I get paid huge sum of money. Some of the money, yeah. To be to, to be an ambassador to influence brands and then i just told you that my 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 store is the most followed sis there are some people that are not even celebrities on ig i can name one two three and they've made millions from business on ig so what are you saying i have over 10 million followers i'm a known face a celebrity i do business and my business is thriving. I've done business for like seven years now. And you, you think I'm joking? You think I'm playing? Also, all those dance, why they dance, when they see, when I advertise, you think, hey, I make good money. And then I am the first set of people that made a lot of money from influencing. Before influencing became, um, bo -bo -bo. Yeah. Yes. I remember Laura and I, we made a lot of money. honorable thing for every woman that is married is to live with her husband mm -hmm. so we live together right now we live together oh, okay. yeah. Fine. so the first person I spoke to was my daughter and then you know she came home for holidays I sat at home and I'm like okay I think I'm going to give this you know another shot and this I know is going to be like the final shot no more trials that's the truth <laughs> so I told her that I was at first she was like ah, hey mommy are you sure you want to do that because my daughter is also very emotional and you know she was me I have gone through a lot we've gone through a lot together We've cried together, we've laughed together. So she has watched me go through a lot of trauma. Um, I think I believe that we serve the same God, actually. There's all one God, you know. I'm one who believes that whatever religion, Islam, Christianity, we serve one God. But, you know, I'm now Alaji's wife. And um, and then, let me tell you, the reception I've been getting from Muslims has been overwhelming. I mean, the love. Mm -hmm. Somebody actually sent me a prayer mat, a test view, and I'm like, I've never even declared, and a Quran. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's kind of making me want to, you know, do the, re change my religion, actually. Yeah, I don't know if that's good enough, but I just believe that we serve one God. Whether I'm a Muslim or a Christian, it's still one God we're serving. So it's fine. Or oh, what? What? what, what? <laughs> but really. No, it's indifferent. I am indifferent. It's indifferent. Yeah, it's indifferent. So it's, it's my choice. It's what I want to do. But we have six beautiful kids and... We're good, we're good, we're blessed. My name is Kazu Imadisoji Adeuti. I was born in Lagos about 48, 49 years ago. And um, my parents were native of Oro in the record and local government in Kwara State. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, they are both late. I started my uh, education at Oro Nursery and Primary School. It was a boarding school at a very tender age. And um, I attended um, Surulere Secondary School. Uh, and um, I got an admission into the University of Joss. I studied business management. And after then, I relocated to the US. I, I worked as a security man for a while and I went back to school to obtain uh, a mortgage license. So I practiced as a mortgage broker in the state of Minnesota. 
for almost a decade before I relocated back to Nigeria. And I started the business of uh, movie and uh, film productions. Yeah. Ibaka is not just for me, I'm a co-owner and a co-founder, but I'm the chairman Ibaka TV. And um, yes, but I started Adekas Productions and later on when we realized that, um, you know, we needed to upgrade because the world was becoming to digital, digital uh, world. So we needed to be proactive. And, um, you know, I met with some of my directors and everybody had their own contribution, whether with talent, with money and whatsoever. We came together and we started the backer. So uh, we are doing very well at Adekas Productions. But we are doing way better at Ibaka TV. So you have a book on Ibaka TV? Um, uh, the MD mm -hmm. called Blessed Idonije. Uh, equally have a director called Ayodele Aulaye. is based in the US. Mm -hmm. And another person called Dr. Olani is based in Canada. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You know, I want to believe that every individual is a politician. And um, irrespective of class, religion, age, tribe, or whatsoever, it is our responsibility to, to be part of politics because it's all about governance. And as we all know, democracy is a uh, government of the people, made by the people and for the people. So we just have to be part of it because whether we like it or not, it is all about us. So whether it is active or inactive, we are politicians. So I love my community so much because uh, the pedigree that I have, my father was somebody that loved his community so much and he did so well for his community. And um, I love my father so much that I believe in his dream, I believe in his legacy, and I believe in you know, carrying on from where he left you know, the good works he was doing to his community. So it's something I've always been doing. Whether I'm coming out now to say I want to be active, I've always been in politics and I've always been around for my people, especially my native uh, states, and uh, to be precise, around my community. I want to believe that uh, people have accepted her uh, as my wife. Even the last post I have on my page it's all about celebrating her, the kind of comment I've had uh, over 600 comments from people and it's all about love, all about congratulations, all about, you know, positive Praise vibes and prayers and all that. So, you know, it is what it is and um, it is my choice and we are happy together. So, uh, and whether people like it or not, they just have to accept it. She never did. She never did. No. No. I, like I said earlier, I'm blessed with two beautiful women. So nothing has crashed. So we are good, you know. Can't you see how blessed I am? Two beautiful women. And, you know, nothing, nothing is shaking, no shaking. I'm good. So we are good. And please, I just want to tell Nigerians, please, I am not the first person to be a second wife. It is my choice to be a second wife. And I'm happy with it. So please, everybody should just leave me alone. Let me just be happy. If you, if, you if, you can, if you can be happy for me, be happy for me. If you're not happy for me, well, go and get busy. I don't know. But just please, but on a more serious note, it is my choice. I'm happy. So everybody just leave me. Let me enjoy my marriage. Please. And I want to use this medium 
to also educate some people that, you know, a lot of married men are out there fornicating, committing adultery, having multiple partners. women, partners, and their wife, no. Their wives, no. And they pretend as if they don't know. So which one is even better? Is it to do what is right, you know, what is godly and what is morally sound? or to be committing adultery or you know i don't know it's even risky spiritually health wise morally so i just think that you know uh a, you know a lot of people are hypocrites and you know when you you know when you are bold enough to do the right thing whether they think you know you shouldn't do i don't know but I think that I've done what is right and I think I've done what is godly, which I so much believe that, you know, a lot of people are going to be making reference to me in the nearest future that I've done something very wonderful. Sweet. Do you want to know the it, it was It was sweet. Do you want to really know the <laughs> details? <laughs> Do you want to it really know sweet. the details? What was the last time you came? It was sweet. Eh? I don't want to say. And I'm loving it. <laughs> so. No, but we, we, had, we had an awesome time. We had an awesome time together. In fact, just believing the moment, just, just flashing back, said, it's making me want to remain in that, you know, the mood. let me not give you all the details, you know, on camera, I know. I can give you one on one, but not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just took two or three days off, you know, to be with my man, but I'm back fully to work. I have a lot of um, jobs in the pipeline. And um, I am looking at a cinema job this year. I'm, I'm looking at a cinema job this year. I, I, have a, I have an amazing script I'm working on. An amazing, amazing script people would love. With a strong social message and very entertaining. You know, because I'm one who believes that I should use my movies to, you know, preach and correct some things. And whilst entertaining people, they still learn. So I have a cinema, because I've not done cinema job in a very long time. The last cinema job I did was like eight, nine years there about. And then, yes, and then, you know, everything has changed right now. So I'm, I'm looking at cinema job for this year by the special grace of God. And then I have other jobs, you know, that I have done with Ibaka TV. We are partners. We work together. And then for Adikas Productions, too, I have a couple of um, jobs. Okay. Yeah, noted and all those things. So people just watch out. I have I have a movie dropping very soon, which is titled JBO Jagutababa Oli. I know a lot of you have been begging me to release that movie. But don't worry, sit tight. Very soon, I am dropping it like it hurts. But I want to make money, so I want to relax. So I'm dropping JBO soon. After then, I'm dropping Agbeke Ayaoba. After then, I am working on Aya, the owner. So in that movie, you guys find out everything that you need to know in that movie. So I will just keep entertaining you. So you keep loving me, regardless. Wow.